What's up YouTube? It's James Q Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today I want to show you how to create or set up an API proxy for your Gatsby site so that you can call different URLs when you're in develop mode than when you're in production. So let's go ahead and get started. So the scenario here for setting up an API proxy is when you run Gatsby locally, you want to call a, a probably a test endpoint, right, than your production endpoint. So let's take one step back. Gatsby is just a front end. It doesn't have a server behind the scenes. So we've been working on, uh, we started with hosting a Gatsby site in Netlify. Then we created a Lambda function in Netlify in the previous video. And we saw how to run that locally and then set it up to run um, in production on Netlify as well. And that basically we can think of that as being our backend. Okay, so that Lambda function in Netlify is our backend. So with Gatsby, when we run it locally, we want to call a local version of our backend. And when we run it in production, we want to call the real thing in production. So that's what this API proxy is for. So uh, let's see, right now for this Gatsby starter, I updated uh, just a tad to add a button that when you click it, says call lambda function and that's what we're actually going to call our lambda function behind the scenes so if you guys haven't checked out the last video you probably want to but uh, if you look at our test js this is the lambda function that we have it takes in um, it gets the body that we pass in and it gets the name off of that body object and passes it to a request bin uh, which we set up just for testing purposes that uh, we can call so let's all right and we've got this request bin set up just as kind of a dumping ground to see if our our um, function is actually running and doing something so we can see that it's calling this request bin when it gets called all right so that's just there just to prove to us that it's working so uh, let's come back to uh, let's come to the index.js and this is where we have I added this button on click of the button, we're gonna call the Lambda function. And what we're gonna do is use the fetch API to do this. So the fetch API is built into JavaScript and allows you to make HTTP requests to a server. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say const response and we're gonna use async await here. So we're gonna mark our function as async. Uh, and we're gonna say response equals await. So this is waiting for this to finish fetch. And then now we need to pass in uh, the value of uh, the URL that we want to call. So typically, oops, typically what we want to call is we want to call the dot Netlify functions and test. And if we look at, sorry for making you guys a little dizzy here. Uh, if we look back in Netlify and look at our functions tab, if I come in, let me log back in here. And look at my latest site, which is what we're what we've been working with in these videos. And look at uh, functions. We should see we've got one function here, test.js, and if you want to call it, it'll be the URL of the website and then .netlify slash function slash test. Now we don't want to hard code this URL here. One, because you don't need to, right? If this is if this is all being served from the same server, the Gatsby files are being served from the same server that the function is running on uh, you won't have any cross origin uh, problems which means we can just call it with the slash which is kind of uh, implies do this at the beginning and then dot nullify functions test so that's what we have here and so we're going to call that url and then we're going to pass in a method of post and then we're going to uh, json stringify and this is just kind of the way it works with fetch is the body we have to uh, go ahead and stringify it. So we'll stringify this data and basically what we're doing is simulating or actually uh, doing exactly what we did in Postman but through our, actually, our actual application. So I'm gonna open Postman to what we had before and with Postman I was calling it with uh, just an object with a name and then a name, an actual name. So name property and then a value of let's say James here so when we click this button it's going to call uh, our um, dot Netlify functions 
test. It's gonna call that function. It's gonna pass in this body, which just has a name property and name value of James. Got my dogs joining me here. And do we need anything else? The last thing we can do is we can get the actual we can get the actual value of the response by doing var body equals await response JSON. So what this is doing is it's taking that response and it's converting it to JSON and assigning it to the body. And I can console log body. Now the last thing we need to do is put this in a try catch because we don't know that uh, this won't throw an error. So we're gonna try to do these things and then we're gonna catch uh, error and we can just console log error if there is any. All right, so let's try this real quick. and I think we'll see that we will get an error. So let's come over to our local site here, fresh, and we'll try to call this Lambda function. And it's basically telling me that it's not able to uh, convert the response to JSON. And so let's, uh, let's check out the response status here and refresh. Let me call it again. I think I figured out what's going on. So it's, it's giving a 200. Uh, and if we look at what the actual request is, so let's look at the network tab and look at the test call. It's calling, look at the headers and make this a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger so you guys can see. It, so it's calling localhost 8000.netlify slash function slash test. And this is not actually what we want to happen. So this is where the proxy comes in is when we run locally, we actually want to run, and I'm not even running the the Lambda function yet locally. Uh, the npm run start Lambda. So let's get that Lambda function up and running. But if you remember, when we run this locally, it doesn't run at localhost 8000.netlify slash function slash test. It actually runs at nine, let's see, 9,000 and then just slash test, which is the name of what we're doing. So this should return okay. Um, let's try that again. Try that again. Nope, still failing. All right, let's see here. Looks like it's getting the data okay. All right, so it looks like uh, that server is down right now. If I try again, okay, there it is. I think uh, request bin, they do a lot of requests for people that are just testing, so I think you could get overloaded. But so again, the last, the, the most important thing here is the URL when we're running locally to call the Lambda function is different than in production. So basically what we wanna do is define that when we call anything with, um, with slash dot Netlify slash functions, let's proxy that to localhost 9000 and then uh, still tack on the test. So the way we're going to do this is to create a file in the root of our directory. Or actually, no, we're gonna use the Gats Gatsby config file in the root of our directory and add a proxy definition. So let's add Gatsby, or open up Gatsby config. And inside of the exports, I wanna add a proxy. And what we're looking for is a prefix of slash dot netlify slash functions. And we want to proxy this to HTTP uh, colon localhost 9000. And this actually, does it matter if this is single or double quotes? Looks like everything else is double, but I think it's okay. So again, one last time here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define all of our function calls like this. So that'll work in production. And then if we see this in develop and this proxy is only respected by Gatsby in develop mode, then we're gonna basically switch it to uh, localhost 9000. So this call to test becomes this call to localhost. Eh, if I can type it, test. All right, so let's undo those. So we got our proxy definition and I'm not sure, we may or may not need to restart this. So let's go ahead and close it down and restart it. I think we do since we changed something in the config. Let's get it started up again and let's just verify that we're able to uh, press that button and call to the API successfully. So let's come over to our application. Let's go ahead and refresh it. Come over to the console piece here. Uh, and actually the network will be just as useful. So let's show the network tab. Let's call the Lambda function. Looks like it failed and it didn't pick up the proxy. Oh, and I think what I did wrong here is I did HTTPS uh, and I don't actually have HTTPS because this is running locally. 
All right, we've got it restarted again. Let's refresh the application in the browser. Give a click. It looks like it came back okay. If we look at tests, notice that, um, well, I guess, I guess it won't show us in here, so it'll still show the original request before the proxy. But you see I got a good response, and in the console, I should see uh, a return of 200. And there's one last thing that I didn't show you guys in functions is if you look in the call that we have in index.js, it's trying to convert the, the body to JSON, but our Lambda function is not really returning JSON, it's actually returning uh, just a string, so it's not returning an object. So if I look at changing this to, uh, I would think I could just return a message inside of an object like that, but uh, it's a little bit weird and it took me a bit to figure out as well, uh, you actually need to stringify this. So you stringify, oops, stringify, a JSON object to actually return JSON. So if I save this, uh, the, the function should restart. Let's uh, refresh and let's try to run this one more time and we should see that object being printed out. So it didn't get it at first, but the second time around it got it and you see the, the message is actually being, um, being returned back as successful. So the last part here is let's actually uh, go ahead and commit all of this. So uh, I've got some shortcuts here. So GSC is status, get add all, and they should all be added. And then commit uh, will be added proxy and ability to call Lambda function from Gatsby. And then I want to push this. And on a push, if I come back to uh, my deploys, I should see that it's picked up this push. It's grabbing the latest code and it's doing the build, whatever it needs to do. And it says published. So uh, let's open up our, actually I forgot what the URL is, this guy and open it up. And this is in production. So we should see now, did we not say this? There it is, there's our, our button here. Uh, in our console, if we click this button, it should make the same type of call, but it's not gonna get proxied because we're not in, in a development build, we're in production build. It's not going to get proxied, proxied and it successfully calls the Lambda function behind the scenes. So uh, this way you have the ability to uh, make requests to your, your serverless functions, your Lambda functions in Netlify, which kind of serve as your backend. You have the ability to call them from your front end in Gatsby, regardless of whether you're running locally or not running locally or in production and by using the proxy you have the ability to have a standard url that you call you just call the slash dot netlify slash function slash function name and that just works right in development and production uh, this is a pretty common technique using a proxy in testing locally is pretty common uh, i do i do this a lot at work i do this in my testing and stuff at home as well so this is something that you guys will probably come across and need at some point so hopefully it helps you if you have experience with this, uh, let me know. Comment in the, the comments below. If you are new to this and it worked out for you or it didn't, let me know as well. And if you have any kind of weird cases that you've come across, uh, thing, additional needs that you might uh, have, let me know that as well. So basically just check in with me. Let me know how this was. Let me know how it, let me, how it re let me know how it related back to the stuff that you're doing, things you might wanna see in the future. So thanks again for checking out the video and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can check out my newsletter on learnbuildteach.com to get updates on the latest content as it comes out. Thanks for watching.